Welcome to the Tibetan Plateau, or as most people like to call it, the Roof of the World, which is a colossal 2.5 billion square kilometers region with an average elevation exceeding 4,000 meters and is surrounded by imposing mountain ranges that harbor the world's two highest summits, Mount Everest and K2. It will also be the location of the $5 billion plus Trans-Himalayan Railway that will connect China and Nepal. This railway will be like no other ever built as most of it will consist of long tunnels in the majestic Himalayas mountains and bridges that hover above mountain peaks and clouds. What is the Trans-Himalayan Railway and how will China and Nepal overcome the engineering challenges in building a modern railway in such an unforgiving landscape? Let's first decipher the reasons behind this intriguing railway. Nepal and the province of Tibet in China are neighbors. Both are famous for their truly mesmerizing, beautiful natural scenery, rich history, and friendly people. However, they are completely separated by the high Himalayas mountains. These imposing mountains simply complicate the movement of people and goods between the two countries. Additionally, Nepal is a landlocked country and can only economically succeed by having uninterrupted access to seaports on the East and South China Seas, oil and gas from Russia and or Kazakhstan via China, and most importantly, access to the massive Chinese market for both export and import. China also has an interest in a stable and prosperous Nepal and access to Nepal's market, which is one of the fastest growing economies in the world despite widespread poverty. Additionally, China views this railway as a possible future link that can connect to India's railway networks, thus facilitating trade and ties between the two giants. As a result of these three major obvious reasons, the China-Nepal railway line emerged as the solution. The railway will simply make the trip from Nepal to China by train and vice versa possible, smooth and fast for tourists, students, workers, investors and goods too. But there is a huge problem. This railway must slice through more than 100 kilometers of the world's colossal Himalayas, which is the highest mountain range in the world and has 9 out of 10 of the world's highest peaks, including Mount Everest. These mountains, referred to as the Third Pole, are the source of some of Asia's major rivers and help regulate our planet's climate. It is estimated that this part of the railway will cost as much as $5.5 billion, which China and Nepal will most likely raise via a bonds issuance program. Additionally, China has vowed to provide Nepal with aid that according to some experts could amount to as much as $1 billion in order for Nepal to extend the railway from Kathmandu to the major cities of Pokhara and Lumbini. Allow us now to tell you a little bit about the breathtaking state of Nepal and some of the deals it reached with China that led to this railway mega project, which is actually part of a much larger transportation giga project called the Trans-Himalayan Multi-Dimensional Connectivity Network. Nepal is about 147,500 square kilometers in size and has a population of 31 million people. Much of the country is located in the Himalayas, but also includes parts of the Indo-Gangetic Plain. It is a truly majestic country that is absolutely worth visiting because it has a very intriguing diverse geography, including fertile plains, supple pine forested hills, and eight of the world's 10 tallest mountains, including Mount Everest, the highest point on Earth. In the past decade, Nepal signed several agreements with China in trade and transit that allow the use of Chinese ports for Nepal's trade with third countries, connectivity through oil and gas pipelines, the establishment of special economic zones, the purchase of aircraft, and the building of airports in Nepal. China agreed to provide Nepal access to seaports including Tianjin, Shenzhen, Lianyangyang, and Zanjing. Apart from three land ports in Lanzhou, Lhasa, and Shigatse for trade with third countries. The agreement also allowed Nepal to export goods through six border points between Nepal and China. China also provides zero tariff treatments to about 8,000 goods originating in Nepal that are exported to China. 
Furthermore, Nepal signed the Belt and Road Initiative Agreement with China in 2017. So technically speaking, the two countries already decided to complete this railway at least a decade ago. In fact, the railway is just one part of the larger Giga project called the Trans-Himalayan Multidimensional Connectivity Network, which is an economic corridor between Nepal and China and part of China's Belt and Road Initiative. The corridor consists of several transportation infrastructure projects. The flagship infrastructure project is the China-Nepal Railway. It also includes a number of highway projects in Nepal, including the construction of a tunnel road and upgrading the Araniko Highway, which was shut down after the Gorkha earthquake. The Araniko Highway ends at the border of the village of Kudari and the Chinese border crossing of Zangmu. This border port is the artery for trade between the two nations. The projects also consist of internal improvements to Nepalese transport infrastructure, including serving three north-south corridors of the country. Many of these projects are already either complete or under construction. The railway project was delayed because of COVID-19 and recent changes to the plans after new feasibility studies have been conducted. The new railway, which will cross 556 kilometers of Chinese territory before reaching the Nepali border, follows the route of China National Highway 318 after leaving Shigatse, passing through Lhotse, Sagya, Dingye, Tingri, and Nyalam. After reaching Nyalam, the railway will follow Highway 219 to Girong. The first extension of the Tibetan Railway, the Lhasa Shigatse Railway, opened in 2014. China is currently extending this railway up to Lake Paiku Girong. As we said earlier in the Nepalese section of the railway, which is quite challenging due to the mountains, has not begun yet. And since that route plan is not finalized, the section from Girong to the border of Nepal has not been built either. Nevertheless, a recent Chinese study proposed a tunnel under the Langtang National Park in Nepal to avoid a steep gradient and building in the protected area. In a straight line, the distance between Kathmandu and the border with China is 72 kilometers. It is expected that as much as 98.5% of the Nepalese section will be bridges or tunnels. There will be four stations along the line, with the terminal at Sanku in Kathmandu. A further extension to Pokhara and Lumbini is planned. This leads us to the big question, how will China overcome the obstacles and build this very challenging section through the Himalayas? First of all, we do expect China to ace it because it has already conquered similar tough challenges involving the mountainous Tibetan Plateau. For example, it built the high-speed railway from Lhasa to the city of Nyingchi. This railway cost $5.6 billion and involved daring engineering to make the route possible. The Lhasa Nyingchi line sees 90% of the route sitting at altitudes higher than 3,000 meters above sea level as it traverses through mountain tunnels, bridges, and archways. It features 47 tunnels and 121 bridges, which make up 75% of the entire route. The line also includes a 525 meter long Zangmu railway bridge, making it the largest and highest arch bridge in the world. Believe it or not, the highest section of the rail line stands over 5,100 meters above sea level, a record height for any electrified railway in the world. The train carriages were designed for high altitudes and are equipped with an automated oxygen supply system, ensuring that oxygen levels are kept at 23.6% at all times. The train's windows also have unique design features, such as UV-resistant glass. This special layer of glass has been designed to withstand the region's high UV levels, which are present in higher altitudes. This train, which is called the Tibet Fuxing, is powered by both internal combustion and electric engines. The dual power engine within the train sees it being able to be switched from electric power to an internal combustion engine if an emergency arises at a high altitude. China is also quite famous for its indigenous powerful tunnel boring machines that can drill through mountains. It also built numerous bridges that literally contain mountain peaks. This means once the route of the Nepalese railway section is finalized, the rest should be a walk in the park for the builder. And we will definitely make a video or two to showcase the engineer marvels used. What do you think about the China-Nepal railway? 
Let us know in the comments section, and please, like, share, subscribe, and hit the bell icon.